It was a cool autumn evening on the island of Sodor. The sun was just beginning to set, and the engines were finishing their work and returning to their sheds. And a thick fog began to roll in. James had just finished his last train and was heading down the main line for home. He and his driver can hardly see a thing through the fog. As such, they didn't immediately notice the points were directed to an old, unused track. Oh, bother, said James, frustrated, once he realized where he was. What silly thing's points are? I don't even recognize this line. Calm down, James, said his driver. We'll go back and set this right. Well, good. <sighs> Honestly, why doesn't the fat controller get rid of these dis... Is everything okay, James? Asked the fireman. But as James came to a stop, his crew saw what made him pause. On the side of the line sat an old scrap engine, rusted and forgotten. Now, the scrap remains of engines of long ago was a common sight on a railway, but this one was different, and it nearly made James sick. It was cut mid saddle clean straight through the metal without fault, and all of its parts still there within the dead engine, the other half was nowhere to be seen. What kind of sick weirdo would scrap an engine like that? asked the fireman. No idea, replied the fireman. I, 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 I don't want to find out, shouted James as he jolted backwards. GET ME OUT OF HERE! At the sheds, all the engines stared at James. He was unusually quiet and looked very pale. Soon, Gordon broke the silence. If I didn't know any better, which, hmm, is quite rare. I'd say poor little James had seen a ghost. He began to laugh, as did the others, save for Edward. I did see something, said James mournfully. What is it? <laughs> Has Gator come back to scare you again? laughed Henry. I, uh saw a scrap engine. The engines stopped laughing then. That's it? I understand it is rather distressing to see those poor souls, but you've seen them plenty of times, James, and I have never looked this shocked about it. This one was different, and he told the others what he saw. Everyone went silent now. Gordon, who have regretted teasing James. Finally, Thomas broke the silence. You must have seen a victim of the Hoff engine. James went red in the face. I don't need your teasing tonight, Thomas! Thomas just frowned. I'm not teasing. I know why that engine is like that. Edward, who have known Thomas for far longer, recognized he was being serious. Go on then, Thomas. Tell us. Well, a long time ago, before the Northwestern Railway was an established company, there was an engine that was brought in to help construct the line. She was, well, different, to say the least. Something had gone horribly wrong with her construction. She had only half a face, with the other half being her smoke box door. Me and the other engines could barely understand what she was saying. Maintenance on her was a nightmare, 
And through all of that, she was just in immense pain on how she was built. Her cries and wails for the pain to go away was just so horrible that me and the other engines could barely stomach it at night. But the nastiest of us, as well as some of the workers, thought it was just a great joke. And this would all boil up inside of her. And well, one day, her behaviour had changed for the worst. Her behaviour became more violent and she would even berate even the ones that felt pity for her. And she would always snarl, growl at them. What was even worse was at night, she would come out of the sheds and go down this heavily forested line when she would come back the next day and talk nothing of it. But how we would all perish in her barely unidentifiable garbled speech. Myself, as well as the other engines, we all thought she was possessed, and she would be seeking any way to get rid of her deformity once and for all. Eventually, the fact director had had enough of her, and he ordered an engine to take her away to the Kildane Ironworks for scrap. Later that same day, me and another engine were headed home from work. As we were heading down the line, we saw smoke coming from the end of the Peel Gunter branch line. We went down the line, and it was a sight I'll never forget. The ironworks had burned down that day. What was even worse is that the engine's body was never found. Only the engine that took her to the scrapyard's body was found. And it was cut in half, right down the middle. Well, it appears that her spirit is still around, from what I can see. Everyone at the sheds were deeply disturbed by Thomas's story. Everyone, that is, except Gordon. Pah! You all truly believe in cheeky little Thomas's story? James, what you saw was likely not as strange as you think. The fog could have made you think it was cut so strangely. Gordon, I'm being serious. The half engine is all too real. Thomas protested. Gordon <laughs> just <laughs> chuckled. Of course she is. Just like every other tall tale you've told. And with that, Gordon went to his shed to sleep. And one by one, all the engines followed suit. But they found it very hard to sleep that night in fear that the half engine is still around. The next night, Gordon was making his way home with some empty coaches after his last train of the day. Again, the fog rolled in, and it was thicker than the night before, but Gordon continued on. Although he didn't believe that in the half engine, almost a story ran through his mind. Thomas has always been a cheeky little trickster. Just then, they saw a red signal. Gordon slowly he came to a stop. He was very confused. That's strange. No other train should be passing at this time, said his driver. He, the guard, and the farmer decided to walk to the next signal to see if anything was wrong. As the, as the time passed, Gordon felt more and more uneasy. The fog, the tall leafless trees, and Thompson's story all clashed together in his mind. Suddenly, he heard a noise, an odd, shrieking noise. Whoa. Who's there? Demanded Gordon. 
but there was no reply. The shrieking continued to get louder and louder, yet no one was there. Then, right out of the corner of Gordon's eye, came the source of the shrieking. It was a deranged tank engine that thundered round the bend and straight towards Gordon, wailing and screaming as she experienced the most awful pain imaginable. Then, as the engine pierced through the fog, Gordon can see that the engine's face only covered half of her smoke bars. <coughs> he cried, but his wails of fear were drowned out by a screeching engine as she flew towards Gordon with a maddeningly angry look. As just as quick as she arrived, she disappeared right before touching Gordon's bumper. Driver, fireman, and the guard race back upon hearing his cries. Gordon, are you okay? What happened? Asked his driver. <laughs> Half engine! Thomas was right! He stammered as he was shaking in fear, his eyes closed shut and refusing to move. The guard went to expect the rest of the train and nearly dropped his lantern in a fright. The front express coach was torn in half, cut clean through a lot of fault. One half remained on the bogies, while the other half landed on the other track. Gordon finally opened his eyes, and when he looked back, he was beyond surprise. Now, how did this happen? Questioned the fireman. The driver and guard were both confused. The driver and guard were both confused as well. Gordon, can you tell us? What is that about a half engine? N n nothing. Gordon replied softly. All the crew simply put it off as faulty construction, but Gordon knew exactly what happened. He remained silent as he uncoupled from the coaches and brought home. He was unsure to tell anyone what he witnessed. He felt sorry for teasing James. He felt sorry for not believing Thomas. And, mo and most importantly, he felt sorry for ever denying the existence of the half-engine.